part one, August. I know I'm not an ordinary 10 year old kid. I mean, sure, I do ordinary things. I eat ice cream, I ride my bike, I play ball, I have an Xbox. Stuff like that makes me ordinary, I guess. And I feel ordinary inside, but I know other kids, ordinary kids, don't make other ordinary kids run away screaming in playgrounds. I know ordinary kids don't get stared at wherever they go. If I found a magic lamp and I could have one wish, I would wish that I had a normal face that no one ever noticed at all. I would wish that I could walk down the street without people seeing me and then doing that look away thing. Here's what I think. The only reason that I'm not ordinary is that no one else sees me that way. But I'm kind of used to how I look by now. I know how to pretend and I don't see the faces, the faces that people make. We've all gotten pretty good at that sort of thing. Mum, Dad, me, Via. Actually, I take that back. Via's not so good at it. She can get really annoyed when people do something really rude. Like, for instance, there was this one time in the playground, some older kids made some noises at me. I don't even know what the noises were exactly because I didn't hear them myself. But Via heard them as she just started yelling at these kids. That's the way that she is. I'm not that way. Via doesn't see me as ordinary. She says she does, but if I were ordinary, she wouldn't feel the need to protect me as much. And mum and dad don't see me as ordinary either. They see me as extra ordinary. I think the only person in the world who realises how ordinary I am is me. My name is August, by the way. Um, I won't describe what I look like. Whatever you're thinking, it's probably worse. Why I didn't go to school. Next week I start fifth grade. Since I've never been to a real school before, I am pretty much totally and completely petrified. <sighs> People think I haven't gone to school because of the way I look, but it isn't that. It's because of all the surgeries I've had. 27 surgeries since I was born. The bigger ones happened before I was even four years old, so I don't even remember them. But I've had two or three surgeries every year since. Some big, some small. And because I'm only little for my age, and I have some other medical mysteries that some doctors have never really figured out, I used to get sick quite a lot. That's why my parents decided it was better that I didn't go to an ordinary school. I'm much stronger now, though. The last surgery that I had was eight months ago, and I probably wouldn't have to have any more for at least another couple of years. Mum homeschools me. She used to be a children's book illustrator. She draws really great fairies and great mermaids. Her boy stuff isn't so hot though. She, she once tried to draw me a Darth Vader, but it ended up looking like some weird mushroom shaped robot. I haven't seen her draw anything in a long time. I think she's too busy taking care of me and Via. I can't say I've always wanted to go to school because that wouldn't be exactly true. What I wanted was to go to school, but only if I could be like every other kid going to school. Have a lot of friends and hang out after school. Just ordinary stuff like that. I have a few really good friends now. Christopher is my best friend, followed by Zach, Alex. We've known each other for quite a while since we were babies. And since they've always known me the way I am, they're used to me. When we were little, we used to have playdates all the time, but then Chris moved to a place called Bridgeport in Connecticut. That's more than an hour away from where I live in North River Heights, which is at the top of Manhattan. And Zachary and Alex started going to school. <laughs> it's funny, even though Chris is the one that's moved far away, I still see him probably more than I see Zach and Alex. They have all these new friends now. If we bump into each other though on the street, they were still nice to me. They always say hello. I have got other friends too, but they're just not as good as Chris and Zach and Alex were. For instance, Zach and Alex always invited me to their birthday parties and when we were little, but Joel and Eamon and Gabe never did. Emma invited me once, but I don't know, I haven't seen her in such a long time. And of course, I always wanted to go to Christopher's birthday. Maybe I'm making too big a deal out of birthday parties. How I came to life. I like it when my mum tells me this because it makes me laugh so much. It's not funny in the way that a joke is really funny, but when mum tells this story, Via and I just start cracking up laughing. So, when I was in my mum's stomach, no one had any idea that I would come out looking the way that I looked. 
Mum had had four, Via, sorry, four years ago. And that had been such a walk in the park, Mum's expression. But there was no reason to run any special tests, nothing at all. About two months before I was born, the doctors realised that there was something uh, wrong with my face. But they didn't think it was going to be bad. They told Mum and Dad that I had a cleft palate and some other stuff going on. Just some small anomalies, they said. There were two nurses in the delivery room the night before I was born. One was really nice and sweet. The other one, Mum said, did not seem nice or sweet at all. She had really big arms and here comes the funny part. She just kept farting. Like she'd bring Mum some ice chips and then fart. She'd check Mum's blood pressure and fart. Mum says it was unbelievable because the nurse never had any excuse. And she never said excuse me. Meanwhile, Mum's regular doctor was on duty that night, so Mum got stuck on with this cranky kid doctor and she and Dad nicknamed him Doogie. And after some old TV show or something. They didn't actually call him that to his face, of course, but but Mum says that even though everyone in the room was kind of grumpy, Dad kept making her laugh all night long. When I came out of Mum's tummy, she said the whole room got very quiet. Mum didn't even get a chance to look at me because the nice nurse immediately rushed me out of the room. Dad was in a hurry to follow her so much that he dropped the video camera which broke into a million pieces. And then Mum got really upset and tried to get out of bed to see where they're going but the farting nurse put her very big arms on Mum to keep her down onto the bed. They were practically fighting because Mum was hysterical and the farting nurse was yelling at her to stay calm and then they both started screaming for the doctor. But guess what? He fainted right on the floor. So when the farting nurse saw that the doctor has fainted, she started pushing him with her foot to get him to wake up, yelling at him the whole time. What kind of doctor do you think you are? What kind of doctor are you? Get up, get up. Then all of a sudden she let out the biggest, loudest, smelliest fart in the history of farts. <sighs> Mum thinks it was actually the fart that finally woke the doctor up. But anyway, mum tells this story. She acts it out all the time. She includes all of the parts, all of the farting noises, and it is so, so funny. Mum says the farting nurse turned out to be a really nice woman. She stayed with mum the whole time. She didn't even leave her side, even after dad, after dad sorry, came back and the doctors told them how sick I was. Mum remembers exactly what the nurse whispered in her ear when the doctor told her I probably wouldn't live through the night. Everyone born of God overcometh the world, she said. And the next day, after I'd lived through the night, I was that nurse, sorry, it was that nurse who held mum's hand when they brought her to meet me for the first time. Mum says by then, they had told her all about me. She'd been preparing herself for the seeing of me, but she says that when she looked down into my tiny, mushed up face for the first time, all she could see was how pretty my eyes were. Mum is beautiful, by the way. And Dad is handsome. And Vera is pretty. In case you were wondering. <laughs>